Docking, margins, and padding are how we control where elements are positioned on every viewport size. Docking defines which edges of a parent container an element will stick to. Margins define how far away the element should stay from those edges. Padding creates space inside a section or container and the content inside. In this lesson, we'll explore how to set these properties to control the position of any element at any screen size. Let's see it in action. Docking is especially useful when you don't want all elements in your design set to scale proportionally, and you want to control their position when the screen resizes. Like here, the responsive behavior of this section is set to fit to screen. If we have an element like a container and it's docked to the top right, it keeps its position according to the docked area when it's resized. But if we wanted it to stay towards the bottom, when we drag it down and it stays docked to the top, it moves towards the top when we resize because it's still docked to the top. We need to dock to the bottom instead. Now it will keep its position according to the bottom edge as the screen resizes. Let's keep it at the top for now. Actually, for this design, we want to keep it a bit shorter and not cover the whole screen. Let's go back to scale proportionally and set the height we want. Wix Studio has a smart docking system. When you drag an element on the canvas, it automatically docks to the top and nearest edges of its parent. You can tell which edges it's docked to from these dotted lines. As it moves toward the left or the right, they switch to whichever side is closer. If you want to do things manually, you can just change the docking from here in the inspector panel. This overrides the auto docking. Let's keep it auto for now. Most of the time, it's best to dock elements to the top, but if you do want to dock to the bottom, you can just drag an element down toward the edge and it snaps into place. You can also dock elements to the center. We'll move this until it's close to the middle and it'll snap into place so it's centered. If you want to quickly align an element, you can use these icons here. Or, if you want, you can use the plus icon in the middle of the position box. Let's align this to the left side. Now it's only docked to the left edge. If you move it up or down, it docks to the top again. If we align to the right instead, same thing. We can align it to the bottom as well. Now it's docked to both these edges. And if we move it even the slightest bit, now it's docked to the top again. Once you've set the docking the way you want, you can still resize the element and the docking stays the same. I'll also change the background color of this container to black. Okay, now let's add our next element. And we'll take a look at how to set docking manually. This element is placed to the right, but let's say we actually want to position it relative to the bottom left side. At the moment, it's docked automatically, but we'll set it manually. We'll just go ahead and dock it to the left and bottom. This overrides the auto docking. Now, when we drag this image around, it stays docked to the edges we set. Only the margins change to match its position on the canvas. We can always turn it back so it docks to the nearest edges again. Turning auto docking back on erases the manual docking we set. Great, now margins and padding. With margins, we can control the distance between the element and the edges it's docked to. We do all that from the position box in the inspector. These margins are set automatically based on where the element is placed. We can control the margins from here in the inspector panel. We'll cover units in a different lesson, but right now the margins are in fluid units. The element's distance from the top and side of the section is relative to its parents. Let's adjust these margins. If we want, we can set these margins to a different unit in this dropdown, like viewport width or height. These units determine how you'll see the margins relative to either the width or height of the browser window or we could use a fixed unit like pixels. Then the element stays a set distance away from the edge no matter what size the screen is. Let's position the image in the middle by clicking on the plus button in the middle of the position box. Now let's look at how to adjust padding. Padding adds space inside the borders of a container. 
with the container selected, we'll click on the inner box to set the padding. This green border here represents padding. Now, if we stretch this image to fill the available space, it'll only reach up to where the padding starts. All right, next up, we'll add a button, and it's going to be docked to the bottom here with this kind of overlapping look. Now, if we look at the margins, this button's bottom margin is a negative value. That's because of the padding. The inner part of this padding acts like the outer edge of the container. Because the button is crossing over into the padding, the margin is negative. It's outside the edge it's docked to. We can even change this to a larger negative value if we move it down more. That looks good. Let's add the rest of our elements to finish up this section. Let's dock the title to the top left. We'll add in a paragraph. And we'll add one more title. And finally, let's give this section some padding. Great, let's see how it looks. Okay, so we've covered how to position elements using docking, margins, and padding. Up next, we'll look at a useful layout tool, Stack.